I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today we are looking at the the Jouet. The Jouet. The Jouet. The Jouet. The Jouet. It means play in French apparently and it's kind of a colourful if slightly comical MIDI controller. It controls MIDI. Look. But it's also sort of slightly odd. I mean, you you get these these things with it. Lots of uh, lots of these these flappy wobbly things, and there's there's more of them, and then there's more of them. And you you know you're initially going oh, I don't know. I mean, I oh, I put this put this here. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, let me put this here. And this there. And then, I don't know, do I put that, that one there? And then what about if I put that one there? Or this one there? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> intriguing. You keep putting stuff down and stuff kind of sort of just sort of works. But initially, it's all a bit kind of, oh, I, oh ew, uh, ooh. So after a bit of sort of, oh, a bit of flapping around and putting things on things and not really getting very far, I discovered that they have a Bitwig demo song. And more manufacturers should do this because it is flipping amazing. Let me show you. Yeah, yeah, are you getting it? So what the heck is going on here then? Well, the first thing to say is that with the Bitwig project, they have mapped everything just beautifully in order to show off the capabilities because it is a MIDI controller, but there's a fair amount of, I guess there's work involved in getting it to that kind of level of control. I mean, obviously you have a MIDI controller with notes on it, you hit the notes, it makes the, the noise, you map stuff to stuff. So that's fine. But this bunch of things is so versatile that you can map it to things all over the place. But as I say, it takes, it takes a little bit of thought in order to do that. But let me show you kind of what's going on in here. This, the Jouet, is this lovely sort of thin, weighty, chunky, nice feeling, magical device. I mean, that's all you can call it really, it's magic. There's, there's nothing else really going on. And inside you have this, this magic pad here, which has three sections on it. And all of your, your magic floppy stuff, which they call modules, they flap onto here and fill up these three spaces, either singularly, like that, doubly, like so, or the only one that does the whole, oh, the only one that does the whole lot is this one. That slaps on there. There's a lot of the slapping about. Very nice. Now the thing that you, you may have noticed was that as I slap stuff about and put it on, 
It just works. I take that off there. Slap that over here. Still works over here. Take that bit off. Keyboard on. And they're all playing different sounds. They're not just rooted to the same channel, the same track, the same thing. They're all rooted to their own things because each of these has its own properties, has its own MIDI channel, has its own controller numbers that are set up within an editor. And that allows you to map the keyboard to one track and the drum pad to another. Like so. And of course, you know, you don't want that on there. You want to play a bit of strings. I mean, I've been watching this for years. I mean, since the Kickstarter or whenever it started turning up and thought, yeah, yeah, this string thing here, oh, it's a bit gimmicky, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit sort of rubbery and silly. Is that actually useful? And then I sit down with it and I'm playing tunes that I can't play on a piano for some reason. I can only really... I could never do that on a piano keyboard. I just can't. I don't have the, the piano chops to be able to pull off that kind of thing. Whereas just whittling your fingers on a fretboard, <laughs> yeah, that's easy. And of course it doesn't have to be a guitar sound. There's no reason why this has to be a guitar sound. It's mapped to a guitar sound because that's obvious, because that's kind of what you're expecting. And they want to fulfill those expectations. But it also could be a different sound. And there's other things going on, of course. You've got a bit of wobble. You've got pitch bend, if you try hard enough. By pushing backwards and forwards on it. And you've got that little bit of wobble if you just wobble it. So what else have you got? Well, this is, of course, the most comical, which they call bubbles. It's bubbles, it's not nipples, obviously it's not nipples, that would be crazy talk. It's called bubbles, right? And it's actually awesome. I mean, I thought, again, it would be stupid. There's a lot of, that's a kind of a distortion field around this whole thing of it kind of, oh, it's a bit kind of, is it a bit Mickey Mouse? It's a bit colorful, a bit too playful. I mean, jouet is French for play. They are all about the fun and the playability and being playful with it. In fact, if you Google Jouet, you will also discover that it's a name for a particular range of uh, vibrators. So that's kind of the feel that we've got going for it. And that gives you a completely different mindset when approaching it, which is perhaps an avenue you don't really want to go down. But anyway, what you have to do is, is sort of climb through that distortion field, get through the fog, and then start experiencing what this offers. So what do these offer? Well, <laughs> I can tell you, they offer uh, X and Y, so you can push it forward and backwards and you can push it side to side. You've got controller numbers for that, and you've also got controller numbers for pressure. But what's quite genius about it is that it's a momentary thing. You push down on it and parameters move and then you release it and they come back to their original setting or to zero or whatever it is that you've set the key range to be. So it's it's kind of throwing on an effect and then releasing it. It's not, you're not turning something up and then turning something down. You are. And then it's gone. And these are all mapped to different effects within Bitwig. So this, you know, there's a there's a, 
a mistake you can make in thinking that it's this, of course, generating the sound, which is not. It's not. It's purely mapped to stuff in Bitwig really, really cleverly. The buttons at the top, these turn on different effects. I can show this on the screen if I try hard enough. So these four buttons here are just power buttons for four effect devices within Bitwig. So I can turn that one on, that one on, that one on, and that one. And the bubbles are mapped to controls at the other end of the effects change. So I've got here, I can push down and it creases the depth of this particular re-triggering LFO thingy. That's doing something else. And that one gives you another sort of filtery type sound. So, I mean, they're just mapped using MIDI. They have different parameters, different CC numbers, and, and they map themselves. That's it. Right, the, obviously you have the keyboard module. Now, you remember me moaning about the Roly keyboard and the fact they didn't have a top C? Well, this has only got an octave and a half. There's a whole half an octave missing. Mm. This is a piano keyboard, obviously. You do have velocity control, a little bit. And there's MPE control as well, which we'll talk about in a moment. But as it stands, it's kind of probably the worst thing about the controller is this little keyboard. I mean, it's all right. You can get used to it. But a replacement for a regular keyboard, it is not. But then, you know, the Roly stuff suffers from the same problem. It's a different sort of instrument and you have to see it that way. There's no point in saying, well, this isn't as good as my uh, 88 Hammer Action Piano Keyboard. No, of course it isn't. It's not supposed to be. But it's something which you can get the hang of playing if you're interested in using this controller, because that's what we do. We, we, we learn to use the products that we have in order to get the best use out of them. So it's not awesome, but it's all right. So we've got one of these, an XY pad, slap that in, see what that does. Ooh. So it's mapped again to mixing in some effects. Now next up we have this little pack of faders. Now one problem you, I do find is that sometimes in removing something it changes the characteristics as you're doing it. So I'm trying to get this to be a normal sound which is down this bottom corner but now I've got some of this also affecting it so I've got to pick this up without touching it, put this back here. See, I've now sort of lost it. I'm not entirely sure what it is that I've turned on to lose that sound. If I take this one off, I can't seem to reduce it to zero. I don't know. <laughs> All I can do at this point, because I don't know the project well enough, because I don't, it wasn't me that did all the mappings, I don't really know where everything goes, particularly at the moment. I mean, I can search around and find it, but you can sometimes get lost because when you're trying to take something off, you're also accidentally hitting things and turning things on when you were trying not to turn things on. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just reload the demo song. Okay, that's what I wanted. I just wanted a regular sound. So I can probably see that here. If I go up to here, to the synth. There we go. 
So what do the faders do? That's what we were trying to get to. So they are also turning on effects. Now if I can take this out of here without upsetting it, <laughs> maybe it's better to take this one off. It needs, I don't know, it needs a lip. I mean, you can't, you know, I'm struggling. I feel I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick something off. It needs almost like, like a, on each one of these, just a little indentation, just so you can put your nail in and pick the thing off successfully without accidentally changing things. So this one, circles, uh, knobs, I suppose you call them rotary encoders. Stick that one on. Oh, well, I, I recovered it by the sound of things. Now there's something else going on there. There's there's pressure as well as other stuff. So it works as a dial a bit like this one does, as a fader up and down, and it seems to work from kind of the seven o'clock through to five o'clock position, if you see what I mean. It doesn't go round and round and round, and there's little indentations on the, on the circle that dictates that. So you can see that it goes from nothing to maximum, and then back again. And what's interesting is that you don't have to use the outside. Maybe you're not supposed to use the outside. I don't know, because you can also do the same thing by moving your finger around inside the circle, which is quite interesting. Because actually I've been finding the outside running around on the bit that's raised to be, I don't know, kind of inaccurate. Whereas if you can put your finger inside and run it along the inside of that circle, that's, that's more precise, that's more interesting. Hmm. Quick discovery there. The last one then is this big fella. Look at the state of that. This is called the scalar. And this is another little bit of genius. I mean, you know, every now and again a product comes along that has, you know, a little bit of genius in. The Jouet has lots of little bits of genius in it. And you go, oh, well, that's a really good idea. Oh, but that's also a really good idea. Oh, and they've done that. Well, that's a really good idea. It's packed full of really little good ideas. This one is great. I mean, isn't that just the beautiful thing? Again, the mistake you make is thinking, oh, this is creating some kind of sound. No, it's not. It's just been mapped to a really appropriate sound within Bitwig. That's all they've done. They've made it clever. And what Scalar does, hence its name, is that you can set it to any scale you like. So it's like having all the white notes or having all the black notes or just having the notes that you actually want in your scale being played. This is also the one that's the most useful in an MPE situation, which again, I'll get onto in a moment. But it has all of the room to do all of that, moving in one direction and wobbling and moving about. Squishiness. You've got a single, fader here, which of course you can map to anything. And you got a nip, a bubble. But again, it doesn't have to be mapped to some kind of ethnic Chinese instrument. <laughs> So those are all your modules. And as you've seen, as I've sat here in real time, knocking about, you just put them down and they start working. You know, whatever you want, put it down. 
and whatever they've been mapped to, they remember. The reason being is because inside each of one of these is a magic microchip of some kind, some magic technology that remembers everything. So each of these floppy things is not just a floppy thing, it has a memory of its own. And so when you program what you want this to be, it's held within it. And then when you stick it on the, uh, your magic pad, the magic talks to each other and it turns that into MIDI magic and magics into your software. It's just awesome. So you can absolutely mid set, be doing a bit of that. And then, you know, as it loops around for the second time, you then bring the drums in and all of the effects. And then you've got your solo coming up. You're gonna stick your thing in, put that on with a bit of that. And the whole thing's not gonna have been messed up at all by all of you trying to take things on and offness. <laughs> so let's look outside Bitwig for a second. Let's have a look into the editor and see what that's about. So the editor is where you can configure things. So you slap something on it, it appears at the top, and then it pulls out of the device what its current settings are. And they all appear down here. It's on a particular MIDI channel. It's got a, a tuning option for this, what the notes are, the velocity range. You've got bending, vibrato, aftertouch, MPE, custom mapping, all sorts of stuff. Add another one. That appears and you can have a look at what that's set to. And then you can change it, you can edit it. What you do is you select what you want from a preset over here. So I've got a pad preset here. I can now change all of the different settings for that. And when I want to then use it for something, I can drop it on here and the program is done. It's uploaded to the physical bit of, of rubbery stuff here. This then becomes the memory. So we want to do a little bit of MPE demonstration. That's best done probably with something like this. So let's put the keyboard in. That's come up. Now what I want is, I believe, this one. I've set it to MPE, uh, to Polyphonic Aftertouch. So in order to load that into this, I need to drag this to there. It takes a second, bing, bing, boom, boom, that's now done. So this one, load up the settings, is now locked and is set to MPE. So we can now use it in something like Equator. Let's try that. So Equator is the, the Rolly software, the software that comes with our friend, the Rolly Seaboard. Hmm, look at that, similar sized. Interesting, we'll come back to that and provides a whole load of five-dimensional MIDI polyphonic expression, what's it, sounds, like so. You can see the little note that appears. It shows you pressure as you push down. And then you've got timbre as you push forward and back. And vibrato or pitch as you go from side to side. I mean, it may take a little bit of calibration or setting up to get the range and the control of this right. Because it seems to jump that way a lot. But with these little keys, it's kind of trying to give you just a little bit of movement to do the forwards and backwards business. What you don't have that you have on the on the rolly is that long run down where you can go up and then pitch shift all the way up and down. It doesn't really have that. This is more like some of those other ones we've seen, like the Keith Macmillan keyboard and things like that. 
you have the forward and back and you have a little bit of this. I kind of want to calm down the tremolo because that's obviously pitch shifting a bit too much, I think. But it does depend on what you're after. Now the one that's slightly better, I feel, for MPE is this fella here. Because you have a longer throw. But let's see whether we can improve on that in the settings within the editor. So I've got vibrato on, vibrato 1024. I wonder what that means. Let's uh, change that down to a little bit. Drop that on there. See if that makes a difference. Yeah, so there you go. Right, let's go into a regular synthesizer, something a bit more normal and just do some standard good old fashioned MIDI mapping. Oh, let's bring something else in. Let's bring in our regular keyboard and let's do the bubbles. Let's do the bubbles. <laughs> Okay, this is obviously one I prepared earlier. I've mapped the this nipple, this bubble, this bubble <laughs> to cut off and resonance. Ah, oh, damn, such an adolescence. So if I go forwards and backwards on the bubble, it's doing resonance. And if I squish it, if it's doing the cutoff frequency. So I've got pressure down and forwards and backwards. And I could do something else by going left to right. Now it's it's a bit tricky and let me let me show you why it's a bit tricky so i want to do the cutoff they're now unassigned to anything and i want to do that with the forwards backwards motion on this bubble here so i push forwards and it's giving me uh cc number five on channel six okay great now if i go to this one i want that to be the left and right now that's come up CC number five on channel six as well. So if I go back to this one, that's now lost its, its thing. So it's that that I want it to be forwards and backwards, which it is. And now this has lost its thing. So I want this to be left and right. No, that's not right. So I want that to be forwards and backwards. Right, and I want this one to be left and right. No, well actually what they're probably doing is picking up on pressure rather than direction. So all I'm trying to demonstrate is that mapping this when you're trying to do a MIDI learn is really difficult. If you're able to enter the details manually and in some things you can specify manually what you want them to be and some things you can't. I mean it may be that you'd need to map these to to known controllers and then go into the editor and change what each one of them is here. So if you look at the right, make sure we've got the right bubble pressed, then we can see that that's channel six, control change four for horizontal. Vertical is channel six, control change five, and pressure is six and six. So if you can specify those manually, then that will be a lot easier than trying to learn these, because it's really hard to do one without the other, because pressure is always going to be happening because you have to apply pressure in order to move it. If you see what I mean. 
So there are challenges in trying to map something. But certainly, you know, putting pressure down to map to the, the cutoff frequency. <laughs> is very easy to stick the resonance up. Or somewhere in the middle. And I can, of course, take this off, stick on something else, like that, do the MIDI mapping again, and I can map that one to that one this one to that one this one to that one which is great and then i can bring my bubbles back And that's still doing things. In fact, if I stick hold on, So can you see how astonishingly versatile this is? You have essentially a whole bunch of MIDI controllers, a whole array of MIDI controllers that you can just swap in and out. So rather than taking a whole bunch, you've got a, you know, a keyboard over here, a knob controller over here, a slider fader port thing over there. You've got the whole thing in one device and it's not crammed in there. These are all decent size, movable, tactile, feelable, touchable good size, all my fingers get in there, everything is achievable. There's no real compromises in, in size because it all acts in the same sort of space. I mean, okay, the, it's not completely perfect. I mean, this little keyboard here, it's just a weeny little keyboard and it doesn't feel particularly awesome. But it also works, you know, it works, it's enough. And you would learn to use it. The little fretboard thing, which initially feels so gimmicky. It's so good. It shouldn't be, hasn't any right to be. It looks a bit silly, a bit funny, and you're going, oh, what? And it feels even a bit weird. But then when you start to play with it, the expression that you can get is, is just sublime. And yet it's silly. All at the same time, that's the wonderful thing about it. You know, you've got your silly nipples and your, and your things, but they work. You know, it's unafraid to be what it is, which is an astonishingly versatile MIDI controller. And it invites you in to this idea of playing interesting things, of creating differently. I mean, absolutely. That's what things like our friend the Rolly have done. If you've seen my review on this, it's also you know an interesting creative interface that gives you a whole new way of playing but what it isn't is not a piano keyboard it is not it doesn't feel anything like playing a mechanical keyboard and that's the point and neither does this it feels different it's a different feel it's a different experience it's something that you're going to have to get over if you want to make the full use of these extraordinary tools the fact that it remembers everything you can put that down and i know that that's going to control the delay every time I put it down because I've mapped it to do so. It's not being overmapped by something else. Nothing is clashing with it. It's on its own MIDI channel. It's got its own controller numbers. It's great. It's just super. So you could use it just as a parameter controller. You don't need to have any of those bits in at all. You could just have your XY in there and your bubbles and your, and your sliders and just have a complete control pad for your software, for your gig or whatever. And it 
startling to look at. It's certainly going to raise a smile from people, if nothing else. It has this, this color and this feel to it, which I can see how you could potentially not take it as seriously as perhaps you should, simply because of how it looks. But that's nothing to do with the product. That's to do with your own craziness. So yeah, it's a fascinating thing. Works beautifully, does exactly what they say, drop things in, it all just works. Gives it you know half a second and it kicks in and it's all there. It's all memorized, you can set it all up, you can map it all over the place and it's gonna be available when you put it in for when you need it. There's a little bit of flapping around in trying to get things in and out, perhaps the potential for accidentally knocking things on, which you then have to put this back in in order to correct it again. But all of those things are overcome through practice. And that's what it requires. It requires a bit of practice in order to use it. And I've only been messing about with it for a couple of days. So in the hands of someone who's actually put something together into their project, enormous, fantastic. The MPE implementation is good. It's there. It's not perhaps as nuanced as the Roly, but particularly with the scalar thing, it works. It does the job. You've got your forward and back because you've got your pressure. All of those things can be mapped to something in MPE, which is becoming increasingly in use and increasingly important. Fretboard, as I said, total genius, total genius, as is the scale thing. Just brilliant. And the fact that you can put down drum pads and have those play the drums while you have a keyboard playing something else, that's also brilliant. I mean, of course you can do that with other controller keyboards. A lot of this that you can, it's just so well put together, so thought out and so immediately accessible that it's just a pleasure to play with. And I didn't think that. When I initially got it up, I made a, you know, made a couple of noises and thinking, oh no, this isn't going to go very well. But in spending time with it, it's really opened itself up to me to be an extraordinary thing. What's not quite extraordinary, perhaps, is the price. I mean, rather quizzically on their website, you can buy just this bit. You buy this bit. That's 400 euros. 400 euros. It won't do anything. It won't make any noises. It won't make any MIDI control. But you can have one for 400 euros. Why? I don't understand why they do that. And then, of course, you can buy these. And these are like $20, 20 euros a pop. Or you can buy a pack for about 100 euros. So essentially, what you're really doing is seeing that this is a 500 euro, around about $500 piece of kit. That's a lot. That's a lot for a MIDI controller. It's not necessarily a lot for what it offers, of course, but for a piece of gear, it's quite a lot. I mean, this, which is the, the direct competitor, I suppose you could say, this is 200 odd, 250, 230 quid, I suppose. So this is about twice the price of this. I mean, you can get this and a bunch of seaboard blocks, which is perhaps the direct comparison, the, most, the thing that's most close to this for a similar sort of price. Hmm. So which one would I go for, given the option? Well, I completely love this, and I love this. These two things by themselves are superb. Love them. So those two things are great. I love the momentary play and tweaking of the bubbles. <laughs> that really works for me. Whereas the Roly, is an interesting creative experience in sponginess, uh, which you kind of get drawn into in a particular sort of way. So for me, the versatility, I believe, is found in the jouet. I think this is a more versatile choice. It's not a cheap choice, not a casual purchase, but I think it offers a, a broader range of creative possibilities. And so probably, possibly, for my money, I think the Jouet is the one. So there you go, the Jouet, the, the flappable, the funny little cute sort of soft, squidgy, playful memory foam thingamajig of a MIDI controller. It's awesome, go and try one out. So that'll do. I hope that was interesting. I hope that was useful to you. By all means, ask questions and grill me about bits and pieces in the comments below. I'm having to give this back, so I'm not going to be able to, to try out things that you ask me because I won't have one. But if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more things from me, then please subscribe, share it, get around, or if you're really daring, check out my Patreon page and maybe throw me a few dollars so that I'm able. To 
do more of that. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. <laughs>